I'm going to go through this fast to save time because there's so many videos about this. I can't speak to Lori. I'm not qualified. Uh, from the time the first reports came out, I found them believable. I did not uh, share them because at the time I said, all have sinned. This is terrible, but it shouldn't be news. Should it? And apparently I was wrong that people having terrible sin is news to Christians who believe that all of us have terrible sin. Uh, that, that's, that's what really breaks my heart is that people are so surprised. I'm, I'm not blaming. I'll get into this. I live by the scoundrel rule that there is not one scoundrel I have ever met from whom I did not learn great truth. I'm in Taiwan. Those are defense jets buzzing over the house. They do this all day long. Um, I met Ravi Zacharias when I was a caterer at Moody. I believe it was 1999. Uh, I'm friends with some of his uh, family friends. Um, I'm not calling them simply because it's all been said. Uh, you know, some things need to let lie. Uh, the conscience is trainable. We, I, Nazi Germany, uh, so many, the, the Christians in the church supported the final solution in good conscience. The conscience is trainable. It is not equal to God. We don't have this, this, this conscience mechanism in our, in our minds, which is infallible and always right. So we just follow that feeling and it's always right. That's not how it works. The conscience must be trained. Um, Martin Luther said his conscience was held captive to the word of God. We must train our conscience. That's why, for example, Bible reading, honesty, good practices, etc. is so important. And apparently Ravi didn't fully train his conscience or something like that. Um, uh, this, I regard this as a corporate sin that hurts all people. We, the church, failed to look after one person. And so that one person was injuring many other people. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, when, when someone falls into sin, the whole church is, is part and parcel um, for not interceding. I mean, how many people were praying for Ravi Zacharias to not fall? You know, like I just thought of that just now, you know, for example. Uh, and the whole body of Christ needs to reach out to people like Lori and apologize, and she needs to forgive us. And uh, this, this is a corporate thing. We do this together. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Life Together. Um, in a sense, I'm seeing that we've jumped off the bandwagon of one celebrity, Ravi, and now everyone's jumping over to another. Um, Josh McDowell said about this in his interview with Sean, his son, uh, celebrities will always be among us, but it's important to worship God. You know, Jesus is our hope. Um, we don't need to abandon all celebrities, but maybe we shouldn't revere them so much, I suppose. Um, all right. I think the reason that I was not shocked by this, I would have been shocked by this maybe five, maybe five years ago, maybe 15 years ago. I don't know. Um... I grew up in uh, the Bible church communities. We're talking Baptist, Evangelical Free, Church of God was, was my mother's upbringing, my grandmother's. I uh, went to Moody, Moody Bible Institute. That's where I met Ravi. Um, met a number of awesome, amazing people there. But then after, I started spending time with Charismatics and Pentecostals, Assemblies of God, um, Resurrection Life Church in Grand Rapids, and Patrick's a very good friend of mine. Um, also, Kansas City had some contact with some Reading people out in Cali. And I think that the reason that I wasn't so shocked is because 
I had a, a wide perspective. I, I think if I had only been in Kansas City my whole life, or if I'd only grown up in Assemblies of God, and I stayed there and went to Assemblies of God school, like Oral Roberts or something, um, or if I had, I, I don't know, Oral Roberts denomination, just a lot of people go there. Um, if I had only been Baptist, if I had only been in one stream of fellowship my whole life, I might have been very shocked. I don't think it's anyone that unshocked me. But I think that because I've I've spent Sunday morning with Christians from so many different stretches, even even Catholic friends, um, I wasn't shocked because I had a wider perspective. And notwithstanding that I've spent more than the last 12 years in East Asia, seeing the church in Vietnam and in Taiwan and in Hong Kong, and they're all very different, but sometimes similar. Hong Kong's very healthy. Taiwan is caught in cultural Confucianism. Um, and Vietnam is very denominational, lots of denominational banter. The, the Catholic friend there got into it with me just like my childhood Catholic friends. And some things never change. Um, but I think that that perspective woke me up so that I wasn't shocked. We shouldn't be shocked by this. The church teaches that all have sinned. What did we think that means? How many other teachings from Sunday morning do we think we understand but don't and will be shocked by later on? Jesus said when the Antichrist comes, many will be deceived. Maybe God is making us deceive proof. Um, surely he is. Um, uh, I... It's just blasting through the thoughts that I've had on this. I have several close friends who are womanizers. Uh, it breaks my heart. I think that God put me in their lives for a reason. If I just end the relationship or just shout at them, uh, that's going to have a butterfly effect. It's an operation in the flesh. So it just makes it worse. I, I believe they need to repent or, or else they'll just keep hurting people in one way or another. They'll just keep shifting around. Um, James says we have to restore people gently. Um, some are Christians, some are non-Christians. Um, and all of them are hurt. They, they, they have a hurt past. It's the saying, hurt people, hurt people. Just a thought I haven't heard out there much uh, at all. Um, Ravi's from India. Um, ask, ask the Todd Whites of the world, um, if, if there's sex trafficking that goes on in, in India, um, Thailand, China, Cambodia, Vietnam, um, I'm, I'm, I have my own opinion and experience, uh, you know, having been over here in East Asia, don't take my word for it. What's the likelihood that Ravi had childhood stuff he was dealing with? Josh McDowell had something he was dealing with. You could ask him, let's look at his interviews. Um, I think Ravi was a hurt person who hurt people and no one ever bothered to help him. Uh, I suppose, maybe. Um, God wants to redeem all people. All of us. All, it, it was in, um, oh, what's this Jesus series? It slipped my mind. Um, The Chosen. Jesus said, all must repent. All need forgiveness. Um, all of us need to be forgiven. All of us need to forgive. I, it's, it's like, I, you know, I, um, the areas where I have to forgive people are nothing compared to what uh, Lori is going through. But I won't compare my spiritual life to someone else. I only know that whenever I find those impossible to forgive scenarios, Whenever I'm able to break through, it's like I get wings. Um, I, I'm not in a place to lecture, but just God is with us. And, you know, in, in the victim times I've seen things, part of what makes the, the discussion so hard is that victims have things they need to forgive people for. And victims have things they need to repent to God for. And, you know, all of us have this mix and that's what makes it complicated. And that's, 
that's why I really like what, what Josh McDowell said with his son in the interview that um, that when we're talking to a victim, we got to just listen. Like this is complicated. We can't see things in black and white. Seeing things in black and white is what blinded us and got us here. Um, uh, I saw, thought the same thing. Josh McDowell said he thought the Lord called Robbie home because um, he wouldn't repent. Um, I think a lot of us have had the same thoughts. So, um, comment. When God... When God sends a punishment for evil, God's not the bad guy, okay? Now, Kim Clement made some prophecies about um, a, a lot of very foolish people in New Orleans who wouldn't get on their own buses to evacuate and died. They would have lived if they got on the buses. And Kim Clement had some prophecy about that before it happened. And people said, well, Kim Clement's a hateful, hateful person. Let's rethink that. God is the God of love. And... Uh, when God punishes us, he's simply removing things that hinder love. Uh, that comes out of Kansas City from Mike Bickle, um, who also said, trust the God of the prophecy, not the prophet. God can speak through a donkey. I hope God speaks through me. All we know about me is that I'm at least as valuable as an ass. Uh-huh. Um... How do you know you can trust me? How do we know we can trust anyone? We don't all need forgiveness to receive it and to give it. Let's, let's you know, what, 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 what even the angel said to John in Revelation, don't worship me, worship Jesus. Um, so this is hard for the whole church. Um, My, my story uh, about meeting Ravi, um, there were caterers, um, he was visiting, he said some profound things, um, and uh, he only drank orange juice, or no, apple juice, excuse me, I misspoke, um, the, the night before he spoke, um, is, you know, everyone else was getting dinner, all the other speakers eat dinner, uh, Ravi would only drink apple juice. Um, after uh, I bought his book, Cries of the Heart, and I asked him, uh, where'd you learn? And he said, I had to call his 800 number and talk to Nancy. He wrote the number down and Nancy's name down in the book when he signed it. Uh, I never called Nancy, um, but he didn't, it, it, thinking back, I, Josh McDowell said that once Albert Muller, who I also briefly met at Moody, uh, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary president, Albert Moeller, amazing man. He had dinner with Ravi and asked him where he got his doctorate and Ravi got defensive or something. So I asked Ravi where he learned and interestingly, I look back and say, Ravi deflected. Um, so, okay, that's, that's consistent. Um, The topic, uh, Josh McDowell talked about covenant eyes, um, the, the need to have this computer software that monitors our, our websites we go to. Um, th that's a very complicated discussion, and I like everything that Josh McDowell said about that. Um, the problem th that we face as a church is, is not in anything that, that Josh McDowell was talking about. But at Kansas City, I think it was about 10 years ago, when they were making all of their interns install this Covenant Eyes software on their computers, these college kids who grew up around pornography everywhere they look and control themselves without software, uh, found... And, and kept complaining to the staff that Covenant Eyes was making them think about lustful stuff far more than, than ever before because they've just learned to automatically filter it out in this evil world. That is what makes the discussion complicated. Um, should, should professional ministers have these safeguards? Absolutely. I just had a friend within uh, the last week or two ask me why I don't talk to girls much. 
Um, so it's, uh, yeah, they, they don't know. We need some rules, but I'm a software developer. I'm on the internet all the time. And if I had um, pornography protection software on my computer, I would never get any work done. I'm not someone who grew up and had to learn how to use a mouse. I always knew. And I've always been filtering. And so I have other devices that I use to keep myself safe, specifically by putting myself on the other side of the world without any safety net. If I mean, I am so vulnerable to God that if I even yell at somebody wrong, my life starts to collapse and money dries up. Uh, did that the other day. And, and I'm feeling it. Like Jesus literally holds me accountable because I don't have these big institutions to hide inside of. Um, Jesus is bigger than the Sunday morning box. And I really think that the box are our institutions. Ravi was in an institution that he made with a board and budgets. And it's those institutions themselves that are the biggest interference in our accountability. Think about that. I've, I've written about this for years. Clergy don't shepherd long ago. Um, the, the church is everywhere. Um, I, there's it just, that, that's another story I, I can get into. I don't, I don't want to go all over that. Um, last, last two thoughts, I kind of saving the, the most important for last, which you're not supposed to do, but, um, two, two things. Um, I'm going to say, um, it's just a thought to any victims out there. Um, it's just a thought. Run this through other people. I'm not a trained professional, but I'm read. I'm, an, I'm, I'm not a professional. I'm not trained. I am well read and well experienced. Uh, look up antisocial personality disorder. Antisocial. See if any of the descriptions ring a bell, uh, such as what they do when they're confronted. They go into rage. See if any of that rings a bell. Um, and also just see if this rings a bell that maybe, maybe, maybe when, when Ravi was telling these ladies, let's, let's pray and thank God for this opportunity. We should be thankful for this. Just run this through the professional, you know, maybe when Ravi was saying that he wasn't really talking to those women Maybe he was employing an antisocial technique to distract from his own feelings of guilt. And having the brilliant mind that he had, he maybe, maybe used that very artfully to cover up his moral um, uh, deficiencies. Um, our... Ravi's teaching still useful? Well, um, they have malnutrition. There are certain important topics that will be laced through every sentence he makes that will not be able to address certain areas that were deficient in his life. Um, my rich dad, uh, Dave Lewis, always told me that people should only teach from what they have done. And everyone all freaked out about Rob Bell, Rob Bell and, and the emergent church movement. I called Rob Bell out before there was a problem. I said that they're, they're, they're out of tune with the spirit somehow. And I gave Rob a letter. It was the week after Greg Boyd spoke on Christos Victor. I didn't listen to that talk yet. And I gave him a letter. I said, you need to speak about substitutionary atonement. Jesus died in our place, our substitute. You need to talk about this. You need to do it. And he never would. He was utterly silent on substitutionary atonement. And all the people that tried to debate Rob Bell and put their finger on him couldn't get it. It was substitutionary atonement. He was silent on Jesus as our sin substitute. And that silence conditioned people so that my friends in Michigan that had wholesale to listen to Rob Bell, they, they, he never said anything bad about talking about Jesus as our substitute. But 
One time I brought it up with a group of friends I'd known from childhood. I said, Jesus died for us. And they all just freaked out. And I think it's because they got used to not hearing that from Rob Bell's silence. Well, Ravi was silent on things. So his teaching is tainted. Yet, there, I've never met a single scoundrel from whom I did not learn great truth. So what do we do with it? We are whole beings. We have to take the best and we, we sin and we all need forgiveness and it's not easy. Um, I woke up this morning and decided to do this talk when sleeping on it and thinking about it. I remembered that of all people, Mike Bickle um, accidentally prophesied from the stage in in the 1980s. He was with um, Wimber on stage, Wimber Vineyard, and he shouted, "I'm confronting a controlling spirit in my church." Supposedly, those are God's words, and Bickle just said this and didn't know why. It, it, that's happened to him maybe three times over his life. Um, and all of a sudden, bishops and pastors started squirming in their chairs and falling on the floor and demons started coming out of them. And John Wimber was there. The vineyard founder was there. Um, and, and they prayed through this or something. You'd have to get the story from Kansas City. But um, that, that in our generation, about our times, we're talking 30, 40 years after, uh, that God would be confronting a controlling spirit in the body of Christ. And now we are in the time when that's happening. And I, I, I look at this and I think, um, you know, the womanizer friends that I have, uh, you know, college kids in Taiwan that, that have had sex with over 100 women, like they have, they have a girlfriend and then they meet another girl each week. Um, and, uh, you know, it, just, it, it, it goes on. It just goes on. These guys that do this develop this social electricity. There's this aura around them. And, and girls that have a broken past don't even know why. They just get sucked toward these guys like a magnet. And I think it's spiritual. Um, there, there's, there's spirits that are wrapped around both people that are, that are pulling them in. Um, maybe. Okay, I don't want to debate Frank Peretti. Um, as I understand, pardon me if this sounds new, but we in the church need to get to know each other. I, I wrote... Crossroads of the Day of Baptist because I couldn't get the Pentecostals and the Baptists to talk to each other, so I wrote a fiction book where I actually would. Um, so if this sounds strange to you, pardon me, but we need to wake up and listen to what other Christians sound like because we need each other. <sighs> From where I, the many places I've heard of this Jezebel spirit thing, and Jesus even talked about Revelation, it's biblical. Um, Jezebel was very immoral. The controlling spirit and the immoral spirit and the, the fake religious spirit are the same. That's the idea, that's the idea of the Jezebel spirit. It's a, it's a, it, it's, it's a, it's a, some type of a spiritual enemy that, that wraps itself around God's people. And it, it involves control and being very oppressive toward people. And it involves immorality um, and it involves this idea that they're being godly when they're not. They, they feel like it's godly when it's absolutely not. And they're all interrelated. And all those women Ravi had, from everything I've experienced with others, that gave him a social electricity, which could have been why everyone found him so enthralling. And it explains a lot of other stuff. So... That is the controlling spirit. The, 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 the false sense of, of a religion and, and the immorality and the control are the controlling spirit. And with John Wimber, vineyard founder, and, and, and his, his young pupil at the time, Mike Bickle, 
um, there was this prophecy that about these years, God would confront a controlling spirit. And I think that that's part of what's happening. And I, I, because I strongly believe that the, the, the Sunday morning system, you've seen the Sunday morning parody. It's a video on YouTube, Sunday morning church parody. That, that's where we think we meet Jesus. And it's been that thinking that led us and made all these blind spots, I strongly believe. Sunday morning is great when it's a want and not a need. But once we start forcing people, I, look, look up Jim Jones, what really happened. It wasn't that the people were deceived. It's that Jim Jones was, was verbally abusing people and physically abusing people who wanted to leave. That, that's, that was the indication. The telltale sign for me is its question. Were there signs? Was there any sign? Didn't anyone see anything wrong? The, the sign for me with Robbie, I'll close with this. Maybe it was about 2005, I was listening to, to Robbie's podcast. And he took a pot shot at, at, the, at the miracle guys. He took a pot shot at the people that walk in miracles. Uh, the, 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 the Jack Deere types, people that, that believe miracles. Um, it, it, it was like a cessationist poking fun at the heresy of believing in miracles today. They, they, they believe that the love chapter, that miracles will cease. Okay, that means that God doesn't do miracles. That's, that, that's where they get that. I'm like, but you can use the love chapter to say that God doesn't do miracles? Um, I mean, did, did, just question, curiosity. Do you think that anyone in Ravi's family prayed for a cancer healing miracle for him? It's just a thought. We all don't believe in miracles until someone gets sick that we know. And then all of a sudden we pray for them. But then we go on Sunday morning and we talk about how miracles are bad. When, when, when Ravi took that pot shot at the charismatic Pentecostal miracle believer people, that's when I said, this guy doesn't have love because that's not unity in the body of Christ. We don't take pot shots at each other, not from the platform. You have a problem, you go talk about these people. I, 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 I'd, I'd go to a Bible church, Baptist, and I hear them talk about the Pentecostals. And I'm like, uh, I was just with them 30 minutes ago. I, and that's, that's not what they're like. And I go to Pentecostal, they talk about Baptists. I'm like, I was just with them last week. That's not what they're like. I actually went and met people from these different denominations and what they say about each other's doctrine, they debate at a distance, but they don't sit down and have coffee as friends and, and hash through the, their differences. And so it kind of makes me think that the most segregated hour of the week is Sunday morning because of the calendar. Maybe, maybe there's this controlling spirit, this thing on the body of Christ that wants to keep us from talking to each other because e evil and the enemy doesn't want us to find out about the truth that we actually really do agree on most of these things. And, and that the miracle people don't want to try to change theology. They just know that they saw someone have a miracle and their miracles are in the Bible and they want to connect that. Um, and, and they need those Bible people to help them sort that out. Because they, they, they work and they, they make their mistakes and their victories in the spirit, miracle stuff, and in, in, in God's daily leading, which they comfortably call prophecy. And then the Bible people, they make their mistakes in, in, in understanding the Bible or maybe misunderstanding the Bible. That, that's where they have their mistakes and victories. And we need each other. I really think that, I really think that's what, that's my conclusion. The, 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 the lack of of being together and being with each other came from putting Jesus in a box, a Sunday morning box. And, and church needs to happen everywhere with everyone that believes Jesus. And then we wouldn't be blinded by this. Love you.